Releasing videos on this channel can be scary. Despite what you might think, I know I don't know everything, and it only takes one of you to know something that I missed to show me that my video is wrong and stupid. Still, I try to show my workings and to be open about the limitations of my methods and findings. And even if the video doesn't end up being the ultimate definitive guide to something, I hope that it can be used as foundations that can be built upon further by those who wish to do so. Last week I made a video comparing the frame rates from CSGO's beta with those of the game today. I concluded that the game now runs slower, but couldn't determine which of the updates would have caused this. Gary43 over on Reddit pointed out a flaw to my testing. I failed to account for the anti-wall hack update in 2015. This update made players hidden by cover completely invisible, even if you could see through those walls with wireframe enabled. I can imagine that this significantly reduces the effectiveness of wall hacks, since your PC isn't even given data about players unless you're close to seeing them without needing wall hacks anyway. I'm sure you'll agree that this is a good update that we're very happy has been added. The issue is that doing these visibility calculations is difficult. How difficult, you might ask? Well, visibility in 3D is inherently a four-dimensional problem that can be tackled using Pluka coordinates, which can also get a helping hand from the five-dimensional projective space, according to Wikipedia. All this just to render courtyards and children's bedrooms correctly for every player. As you can imagine, doing these visibility calculations puts extra stress on the server hosting the match. Not a problem if you're just playing the game, but since I was using the same PC to both host the server and to benchmark the game, it could have resulted in extra frame rate drops when compared with the beta. So I redid the test, using the exact same settings but using another PC to host the game, leaving my benchmark PC free to act as a client rather than also as a server. And the results were stunning. Firstly, GPU limited PCs. This will apply to you if you're running the game on high settings and have a decent processor. If you're only a client, then the latest version of CSGO has dropped by just 7% since 2012, rather than the 20% that you'd have if you were also hosting the server that you're playing on. The improvement is smaller if your PC is CPU limited, with the drop in FPS going from 33% to 27. Now I can understand how this can be a little confusing since I'm comparing so many different variables at once here, but to put it simply, you get much higher FPS if you're just a player rather than the hoster of a server. Which is kind of obvious, but now we have graphs to show just how much of a drop it causes on my setup. What's more alarming is that playing on a server with 10 bots today is more intensive than it was to be hosting that CSGO server back in 2012. That's a significant drop. So it appears that this wall hack update and whatever else has been added to a game server's workload adds mostly to the GPU, which is a smart move considering how CPU limited the source engine has been in the past. If you want the best frame rate possible, you should still use the lowest settings. But your frame rate, and therefore the advantage of using the lower settings, will be about 25% lower than it was back in 2012. So yes, Gary43's suggestion not only massively changed my results, but also answered the question I had in my previous video about which update was causing the drop in FPS. In case you haven't been paying attention, the drop in GPU performance since the game's released is mostly only felt if you're hosting a server, and although we don't know for sure why, the anti-wall hack update is one very possible culprit. Maybe server owners watching this can think of other possible causes for this. I still don't know what's causing the CPU drop, but that hitbox update looks mighty suspicious. So thanks to Gary for pointing out something that I overlooked. Have a click point. But now to question my method of testing. Remember, this is all from just three minutes of bot action. It could be that performance varies wildly every run, meaning that none of my findings should be trusted. So I repeated it again, twice, giving me three results for every test. And much to my delight, the results were remarkably similar every time, meaning that three minutes of bots on arms race is a fairly consistent benchmark to use, in case for whatever reason you can't use any other method to measure your frame rate in CSGO. From these repeats, I've drawn these more robust conclusions about the difference that being a client makes compared with hosting the server yourself. If hosted on the same computer as your benchmarking, the drop in CPU performance remains at about 33%, and the drop from GPU is close to 20% every time but if using a server to host, you can still see that in GPU limited situations, the drop is between two and 6%. In other words, if your graphics card could handle CSGO in 2012, it most likely still can, provided you're not hosting the server, which you won't be doing unless you're playing offline against bots or hosting private matches with friends online, which I suspect that very few of you are. CPU drop varied a bit more between runs, at worst being 27% and at best 21% slower than in 2012. This is the result that you should care about the most, since this will reflect the drop that most of you will have experienced since the beta, provided you game at low settings and therefore most likely care about getting the highest FPS that you can. In my last video, I concluded that performance has dropped by about 33%. With what I've learned from this video, I can lower that to just under 25%. CSGO's updates have still resulted in frame rate drops, but they're not quite as extreme as I previously thought, unless you host servers. 
So, I apologise that this video had to be made. As I've said, I don't know everything. I have to research every video I make and learn things from them. If you binge watched my videos right now, which I strongly recommend you do, they're awesome, then you'll likely end up knowing more than I do about CSGO right now. I think the important thing is to be honest when I make a mistake and to use it as an opportunity to fix the mistakes and, if anything, to improve on my research further, which I believe that this video has done. Thank you to Gary43 for making this possible. If you spot a mistake in my videos, then please shout about it. But don't be too mean, please. I'm a sensitive soul.